After their opening road win at San Jose State, the South Florida Bulls returned home to football rich and football crazy Florida. Back to the friendly Bay Breezes for their first game at Raymond James Stadium since last November. The long wait was over for everyone and Bulls Nation couldn't wait to reunite with their USF family for a little tailgating and a lot of football. The Bulls' return, combined with the Labor Day weekend, produced a holiday atmosphere full of anticipation. It was a big day for head coach Charlie Strong, the fourth head coach in USF football history, as he and his staff and players were anxious to continue a streak of success in home openers. The Bulls had won 19 of the first 20. His first game day Bulls stampede would end in USF's brand new locker room. You're back in Ray Day. Game time. Hey, I got a new jersey six. Take six. Whatever number I'm in, I just know I'm rocking with it. I'm going with it. I'm going crazy. <laughs> The weather didn't cooperate. There would even be a lightning delay. But none of that could dampen the opening day enthusiasm. But Stony Brook brought some enthusiasm too, for it marked the first time they had ever played a ranked FBS team. And the Bulls are finding out that being ranked puts a target on their backs. But the USF defense has nine returning starters back from last year's record-setting team. The Seawolves learned early it would be tough sledding against this group. Greg Reeves had a big early sack that stopped one drive, and he and Augie Sanchez and company set up shop in the Seawolves' backfield. But the South Florida offense was finding it tough to get going as well. And a special teams play set the tone for the first half when Stony Brook blocked the Bulls punt for a touchdown. Will be fallen on by Stony Brook, touchdown Seawolves. Quarterback Quentin Flowers would lead the Bulls back to a real good place, the Stony Brook end zone. Since he took over the starting job two years ago, the USF offense has averaged over 40 points a game. That certainly makes it easier to play with confidence on a day when everything is not clicking as planned. Gonna get another shot at it, dives in, he Darius scores. Tice's touchdown even things up, but the rest of the first half continued to be dominated by defense. Statistically, Stony Brook has built one of the best defenses in FCS football the last several years, but few expected them to slow down the Bulls. The Seawolves penetrated deep enough in the second quarter to cash in on a 36-yard field goal, and that was about it. The Bulls surprisingly trailed 10-7 at halftime, but the most important coaching adjustments come at the break, and South Florida came out and executed better in the second half. He throws, caught, touchdown! Marquez Valdez Scantling with a terrific catch, and the Bulls have taken the lead for the first time today. The rain had stopped, and suddenly everything seemed brighter, although there was still much work to be done with more than a quarter to play. Now it was time for the Bulls' special teams to do something special with Tajay Fullwood. The catch starts running forward, picks up a block, gets into Stony Brook territory, gets into the open field of the 30, cuts it back and gets dumped at the 18 yard line of Stony Brook. Now we're getting somewhere, first and 10 for the Bulls. Kick has the distance and it's good. So the Bulls have scored 10 unanswered. Run it this time. Stacy Bedell trying to get ahead of steam. Down the sidelines, he's free. And Stacy Bedell is going to score. Stony Brook is not done yet, folks. Actually, they were finished scoring. But they had pushed things to an early fourth quarter draw. That's when the USF experience took over. 
Flowers would lead the Bulls in rushing against Stony Brook, but it was his arm, not his legs, that gave them the lead for good. Can he get some separation? It's caught. That's Tyree McCants. And he is down the sideline for the touchdown. With a mix of grinded out gut work and splashy big plays, USF would overcome its sluggish start. The holiday party atmosphere returned to Ray J. They were enjoying watching a team that has won 12 of its last 14 home games. And no wonder they are so comfortable here with so much of their roster coming from high schools in the seven county Bay Area. It was time now to turn things over to the defense. Here's Carbone, lofting it in the air. Has a receiver. It's intercepted though. Instead, Mozzie Wilkins was waiting for him. And this one off, and right up the cut. Touchdown. The exclamation provided by Darius Tice. And USF keeps that streak alive, benching. The Bulls are 2-0, but with conference play ready to begin, they have some work to do to reach their own lofty expectations.